today we're doing a paint pour. Um, I love paint pouring just because every piece is going to be unique. It's a fluid art. So you could be following along with me today and your piece is not going to turn out like mine. I can repeat this and it's still not going to be the same. So um, a few things first is I want to make sure you guys are working on a flat surface. It is extremely important because you don't want it to be um, off-centered because, again, it's a fluid art. So if one side is higher than the other, everything's going to go to that lower side. Um, also, your whatever surface you're working with, a wood surface or a canvas surface, you want to make sure it's lifted up so it's not touching whatever you're working on. Um, if you're using canvas i like to use little push pins and put them in the corner it lifts my canvas up just enough so the paint doesn't pool at the bottom and it keeps it even um one thing to look out for is if you're putting something to sit on the center of your canvas that's going to actually push your canvas up so you're going to have um a spot without paint because it's going to be higher um, please make sure this guy today we're doing an abstract with um, a hair dryer. So make sure you have your walls covered behind you because it will splatter. Um, and of course your table you want covered or you want to work in one of those uh, tin like turkey baster um, that you can just throw away when you're done. So I am working with five colors here today. So first off I have this light ivory, a uh, fruity 2D or 2D fruity, pink, a pink quartz, and a bittersweet orange. And then I do have a gold. And this is already um, in a bottle and all mixed. Um, I tend to keep my uh, paint containers and mix my paint in them. It just, especially if I'm doing a lot of these, it's a really great way to just hold my um, paints and they're ready to go. Um, and then, or these guys, a lot of these I love for my big background surfaces. So I tend to use black and white a lot. So I have these in both of those. Um, I also today am working with the pouring medium from Deco Arts. So this is what this guy looks like. I also really love Liquitex. I think when I use Liquitex, I do get a little bit more cells, but I don't have to worry about that because I have this blaster um, silicone lubricant. So it's kind of similar to W40, but I'm just gonna put a little squirt of this into my paint and it will form more cells for us. So I do have my base paint here in the cup because I wanna be able to show you the consistency that you're gonna want um, if you are using a different brand than me, your paint could be thicker. So I'm not going to show myself mixing this, but this is the consistency you want. See when I just pick some paint up and drop it right back in there, it just, it doesn't pull up. It just falls right back into the paint and is smooth. You want it to be very fluid. Um, if it's too thick, it can crack. And if it's too thin, it can crack. Um, also, if it's too thick, it won't really uh, level out. I found like it should. So you want to make sure it's a good consistency. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, I'm going to come in with that light ivory as my background. And I'm going to cover the whole canvas. And I like to go ahead and use my popsicle stick to go ahead and help my um, paint get moved all over the canvas. But you could use your hands or you could tilt it back and forth, but I like to use a popsicle stick. I tend to get it a tad more even. Okay. And I wanna go all the way to the edges with this, you guys. So in doing this, it's gonna help the paint be able to move wherever I want it to. Um, if I have dry spots like this, sometimes the paint just doesn't want to move over there. So kind of covering your whole canvas to begin with does help a little bit with um, your paint moving. And I have some bubbles already on here, so I am going to go ahead and come in with that heat gun and just pop some of the bubbles.
Now, I'm gonna come in with all my colors and I'm gonna go back and forth with it um, from corner to corner. And we're gonna start with that pink. And again, I have them in these little squeezy paint bottles, but you could go ahead and be um, doing them in these measuring cups. You could be doing them in Dixie cups, whatever you have that's gonna work for you. We're gonna come in with that brighter pink. I might put a little bit more brighter pink. And then I love gold, so you know we're coming in with that gold. Okay, so now what I like to do is I like to go ahead and put a little bit of extra white paint a little bit of extra, whatever my base um, paint is, just right along the colors we put down. And that is gonna be because we are gonna actually take our blow dryer and push the paint back over all this beautiful color, and then we'll blow it all out. So let's get started. So I have my blow dryer. I have this little attachment. Um, I like how it blows my um, paint and when we come at it we're going to be going at an angle you don't want to be directly on top because it's not going to um, like give that abstract look that I'm going for and I do make sure my um, setting is on low and uh, cool temperature so again we're going to push the base color over our other colors And now we're going to come back at it the opposite direction. And I got to get this corner a little bit. There's a little bit of lack of color here, so I'm going to try something real quick. I'm gonna come in with a straw and kind of blow the paint. And again, I'm coming at an angle. I don't wanna be right on top. And then I don't like that this is super um, bunched together, so I am gonna blow this a little bit. Now, if I wanted to and wasn't loving this, I could go ahead, just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you just adding a little bit of colors. We're gonna come in with those brighter tones and just coming in with that blow dryer again. And then I'd come in with my straw and just Just adjust where needed. Actually, adding that color is really cool because I got some really good tones over here. Let's move this light a little bit so you can see. So, and let's rotate it. Just making sure I'm have everything where I want it. I really liking the way that's looking. I'm getting some really nice cells already. Um, so I'm gonna come in and hit it with that heat gun. Just pop any air bubbles. Now you wanna make sure you're not staying in one spot for too long, cause it will overheat. But also coming in with that heat gun, I'm instantly gonna start to see a 
few more cells formed. I'm actually going to kind of tilt it. And then we're going to tilt it. I'm going to give this corner, this is kind of bare over here, and I want the um, paint to be able to come over on the edge here. Okay, you guys, I like the way this is looking. Um, again, I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun once more. I'll let this, I'm going to let this dry um, for about 24 hours. And we're going to come back and we're going to see what other cells form. Also, we might get some other colors come through on the paint. Um, one thing I do like to point out is here would be a good time if you want to make sure your um, edges are all covered. Just go ahead and I like to just scoop the paint that's fallen around my canvas. Um, but if you have a preference on the color, if you want it to match your background, um, go ahead and make sure you go around with your background color, but I, c I don't mind it being mixed. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that extra paint and just go all around my edges. All right, you guys. So again, we're gonna let this dry. We'll come back in 24 hours and we'll see what it looks like seeing if any other colors came forward and what other cells are going to um, transform as it dries and moves. All right, you guys, our piece is dry. Look at it. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm going to bring this closer just so you guys can see all of those cells. I mean, look how beautiful. Just so gorgeous. And then what a fun piece. Um, I think this would look awesome framed and up on my wall. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, might even give to a friend for her little baby girl's room. So thank you for following along. Don't forget to tag us in your own creations, um, whether that's on Instagram or Facebook, just at Craft Warehouse. We'd love to see what you guys are all doing and creating. All right, you guys, happy crafting. Mm -hmm.